This slider plus from Edelkrone is overall a smooth slider, but there are some things that can make its slide motion not as smooth as you'd like. This can occur straight out of the box, but most of the time it's after the slider has been in use for a while. Today I'm going to go over some maintenance tips that you can do to keep your Edelkrone slider operating as smooth as possible. There are a few things that could be causing your Edelkrone Slider Plus from not operating as smooth as it once was. Thankfully most of the problems can easily be fixed with an Allen key and some tape. The problem I had that brought these issues to my attention was that my slider would seem to speed up then slow down over and over again, making the motion stagger. I realized that I had bumps in the belt which is caused by the slider being locked in in the same position for a long period of time. This causes uneven speeds when being rolled over. To fix this issue you need to take the belts off the slider plus and remove the magnetic locks on each end. Then you want to take note of which direction the bumps are and roll the belt in the opposite direction to straighten out the bumps. Roll it tightly and wrap it up in tape. Edelkrone support suggests to keep them wrapped up for 4 to 8 hours. I kept mine for 7.5 and, and when I unrolled the belts they still had some memory bumps, but they were less pronounced. And as we'll find out later after I complete some of the other tune-ups, they may be good enough. This is the first time I'm doing this and I've had my slider for just under 1 year. So if you don't wait as long you may have better luck. I'd imagine over time the belt can become permanently deformed though. The best way to mitigate this is to remove the belts when you know you won't be using it for a while, or Edelkrone suggests storing the outer and inner carts on the opposite ends of the slider. If you're unsatisfied with your belt, Edelkrone will ship you a replacement for free, which I did after seeing these results. The next thing you can check are the wheels on the outer and inner cart. When you roll the outer cart forward and backward or rotate it side to side, there should be very little movement and you shouldn't be able to hear any clicks of the wheels lifting off the rail and then back onto it. The wheels should always have constant contact but you don't want them to be too tight either causing excess resistance. This could also lead to choppy movement from things being too stiff. The way to modify how much contact each side gets is by tightening these screws on each side of the cart with an allen key which squeezes the wheels closer to the rail. When you first get your slider brand new the screws on the outer and inner cart should all be calibrated correctly but over time they can loosen. The best way to make sure you aren't too loose or too tight is to feel the wheel underneath that's corresponding to that screw on that side. As you roll the cart back and forth you can feel if the wheel is not tight enough when it's not moving. Lightly tighten the screw as you move the cart back and forth and as soon as there's constant rolling then it should be at the perfect setting. It's a slightly different procedure for the inner cart because the wheels are a little harder to feel and calibrate as you shift and tighten. But when I did this I noticed that the slider felt a little stiffer than it should be. A more precise way to do this would be to move the free cart to one side and test the wheels on the side that the cart is on. Mark the wheel with a pencil to better see the movement of the wheel. As you can see here the wheel isn't moving so it's not tight enough. As I slowly tighten the mark on the wheel starts to move until I get to a point where there is constant movement as I shift the cart. Repeat the step on the opposite end that's closest to my body then shift the cart over to the other side of the slider and repeat the same process with those two wheels on that side. Next is to deal with any dust or debris that are on the rail or on the wheels. Simply just take a rag or cloth, a microfiber cloth is probably the safest, and wipe down the bars. If things are sticky, you can dampen the cloth. These aren't greased so you don't have to worry about wiping away any lubricant. If things still feel a little gritty when you slide, there may be some debris on the wheels themselves. Edelkrone provides you with three sheets of double-sided tape with four strips that are wide enough to roll over the wheels on the inner and outer cart at the same time. Here's another good test to see if the wheels are too tight. You should be able to roll over the tape with relative ease. There will be a little bit of resistance, but if it feels too tight, then stop and roll back the other direction. Don't force it like I did here because as you can see, the tape disappeared. It ended up getting rolled in one of the wheels and it was very difficult to remove because the cart doesn't come off the rails very easily. Reuse the same tape for each side and do the bottoms as well. This step really shouldn't have to be repeated very often. Only if wiping the bars with the cloth doesn't seem to get rid of that gritty feeling when you move the slider back and forth. So those are some of the common problems that may be keeping your slider plus from performing as smoothly as it should. 
As you saw at the beginning of the video, after I completed these quick tune-ups, there was a major improvement with how the slider moves across the track, and it's once again as smooth as it was straight out of the box. If you still have problems, I recommend reaching out to Edelkrone directly. Their support is some of the best I've ever experienced, technically as well as with customer support. I also believe that all the repairs are covered under a lifetime warranty on your Edelkrone product. And hey, if you're curious about how smooth the Slider Plus is compared to the Slider 1, I test them both in a few different scenarios in this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.